This is the continuation of the fire equipment. So let us proceed on the uh, extinguishing agents. First is the water. Water contains water that gives or that serves calling of the uh, fire. Calling is the most common method of fire extinguishment. And when we say water, it is most effective calling agent. It has the greatest capacity for heat absorption and most burning substances that can be cold below the ignition points by the application of water. It can be applied as solid stream, high velocity fog, and low velocity water fog. So what this uh, solid stream uh, works, it can reach for distance and has penetrating power. Fog is preferred due to its cooling effect. Fog can absorb more heat. Fog reduces the amount of water that must be used. Fog tends to smother the fire by displacing oxygen. Fog can be used successfully on oil fires as well as on class A fires. If used on an oil fire, there is great danger of reflash until the entire surface of the oil has been cooled below the flash point. Fog does not conduct electricity, but if the nozzle is accidentally to electrical equipment, there is great danger of electrical shock. Low velocity fog can be used with little danger on class D fires. Fog affords considerable protection to the investigator and firefighter by forming a screen. Water fog also tends to dilute or absorb various vapors and to wash fumes and smoke from the atmosphere. Water is not recommended as an extinguishing agent for electrical fire except as a last resort. Water cannot be used for class D fires. Produces hydrogen gas. The heat given off by the fire ignites the hydrogen, causing an explosion. The next second extinguishing agent is the foam. Foam is a thick, viscous, light, and stable material that floats on almost any liquid, including water. It is non-toxic and does not damage paint on surface. The air or mechanical foam consists of very small bubbles of air mix into water which has a small amount of foam forming liquid added to it by a mechanical foam forming pigment. Foam is a high, highly effective extinguishing agent for smothering large fires, particularly those in oil, jet foils, and gasoline. The Foam blanket continues to seal off vapor from the surface foam from, from the surface. Foam is sufficiently fluid to flow over, around, and under obstructions to enter otherwise inaccessible spaces. And a third one, light water or aqueous film forming foam, it is a new synthetic film. Uh, forming foam liquid replacing the present commonly used foam. The AFFF has replaced protein foam for all around firefighting purposes. The unique action of light water stems from its ability to make a light water film float on flammable fluids. As foam is applied 
aqueous solution drains from the foam bubbles and floats out over the surface to provide a vapor seal. This enhances extinguishment and prevents reflash even when the film from blanket is ruptured. And then the fourth one is the dry chemicals. They extinguish a fire by a rather complicated chemical mechanism. They do not smother and do not cool the fire. Instead, they interrupt the chemical reaction by suspending fine particles in the fire. In effect, they put a temporary screen between the heat oxygen and fuel. One of the most important agents at present is potassium bicarbonate, also known as purple K powder or PKP. It is very effective against class B and class C fires. However, it is both corrosive and abrasive and should be used on class C fires only in emergencies. So there are two basic types of dry chemical. First is the ordinary and regular dry chemical that generally refers to those powders that are intended to use on class B or class C fires. So it is not used for class A, class D, class E, and as well as class K. The second one is the multipurpose dry chemical, which refers to powders listed for use on class A and class B, likewise in class C fires. Next extinguishing agent is the carbon dioxide. It is a dry non-corrosive gas. It does not damage machineries or equipment. Non-conductor of electricity, safe in fighting fires that might present electric shock hazard. However, the frost that collects on the horn of the carbon dioxide cylinder is a conductor of electricity. Rubber gloves should be worn when using carbon dioxide to extinguish electrical fires. Carbon dioxide extinguishes fires by smothering, which is temporary. Carbon dioxide is dangerous. It does not support life. Aspectation can result from breathing carbon dioxide. Six is the um, bromochlorodifluoromethane, BCF Halon 2012-11. These agents have been used for over 50 years. One of the modern and effective extinguishing agent available for general, general risk. BCF is a vaporizing liquid, interrupts chemically the chain reaction taking place in the flame. It has the ability to minimize the possibility to reflash after the fire has been extinguished. A colorless, non-corrosive liquefied gas leaves no messy residue. Highly recommended for industrial factory, home, computers, and electronic company, motor vehicles, and so on and so forth. And the last extinguishing agent is the dry powder. When the dry powder is a term for agents used to extinguish combustible metal fires, no one dry powder has been found to be effective on all types of combustible material metals. Dry powder is used primarily only on class D fires.